So we have just made it uh, just outside of Moab, Utah, and we are going to a campground that we stayed at before uh, when we had our truck camper, and we are hoping that there's room. Um, we stayed there, I think, like beginning to mid-October in 2019, and it wasn't that busy, and so we're hoping now around the same time that we will be able to find a spot. So here's hoping, and uh, we'll keep you updated. Welcome back to our wander. We woke up in Breckenridge, Colorado this morning and it was a beautiful morning, but it was time to move on. There is a winter storm coming across pretty much the line of Wyoming and Colorado. And so we decided we're gonna head south and west. And so we have decided to go to Moab, Utah. We have not been here since 2019 and we've had um, one bad experience here and one really great experience here. And we are hoping that we would have another great experience and so far, it looks like it's going to be another great experience. Leaving Breckenridge was a little <laughs> bit stressful. We had to go through Vail Pass, and as we learned on our last endeavor to get to Breckenridge, we could not do these passes at 7% grades for eight miles with the CRV in tow. And so we unhooked, and Lindsay drove the CRV behind me. I downshifted into second gear and pretty much did about 40 miles an hour. So if you were behind me in that little stretch of highway, you probably hated me, but that's what you do when you have a big motor home or a big RV. Take it nice and slow, let the engine do the work. So we cruised down through the pass. It was beautiful. Um, there was a couple places where there was some road work going on, but the mountains are just stunning. There's a reason why people moved to this part of Colorado. Once we got past Vail, it was like a whole different set of mountains. Yeah, it's like they turned more deserty. Um, yeah. It was interesting. <laughs> and, and so we drier and red and like yeah. maybe 10, 10 miles or so west. And we were on I-70, so it was the interstate. So we pulled over at a rest stop that fortunately had a really nice dump station with uh, potable water. And we pulled over there so we could dump, uh, fill up, and reconnect the car back up to the RV. All that was pretty quick and easy, and we do appreciate Colorado is one of those places that has, for rest stops, a lot of them will have these dump stations and the potable water, so you can take care of the business there. Once we hooked up, we continued west on I-70, and then we entered this canyon. It was absolutely stunning. I think for the interstate system, this was the top two beautiful, most beautiful places that we've driven through on the interstate. There's a place in Utah over near Salt Lake City that's that's stunning and gorgeous as well. But this canyon was absolutely spectacular. So then we crossed into Utah. We had a little bit of rain, not much, but just a little bit. And the sun was setting or starting to set and the, the colors were starting to change. And that's where I got a little anxious about finding camping near Moab. It is the end of October. And when we were here before with our good experience, we were here toward the beginning of October. So we were hoping that we had some luck and I was still a little anxious about getting camping. Yeah, we, um, so when we were in Utah, we pulled over at another rest station that was like, oh my gosh, it was so pretty, very scenic. So we took the dogs out um, for a potty break and a short little walk, and then we got into Moab. And yeah, that's when we started to get anxious because it looked kind of busy. There were a lot of campers um, parked out on BLM land. Um, the colors were really popping. There were a ton of rock climbers. Yeah, so the, the drive into Moab is, is spectacular in itself. When you pull off of the 70 and you head south, it's just an absolutely stunning drive. And then you'll start to see areas where there's dispersed camping on BLM land on either side of the road. And it seemed, as Lindsay said, it seemed like it was pretty busy. So that was making us a little worried that we weren't gonna get to our favorite spot. And our favorite spot is near our favorite hike in this area. And we don't spend a lot of time in national parks, so it wasn't in arches and it wasn't in canyonlands. We'll be showing you a little bit more about this place. So we, as we're driving down this beautiful road along the Colorado River, um, it seemed pretty busy. We passed one um, campground that looked pretty full. Um, so we were a little worried and then we arrived to the campground that we've camped in before and it is called Gold Bar. And we pulled in, we saw pink tickets on every signpost. So we were a little worried, but when I ran up to the signpost, they were from a day ago. So these are the tickets so. <laughs> that you put on the campsite yeah. to let everybody know that you're there. 
And if you're going out for the day, which a lot of people in Moab do, you may just put your ticket up and then take off and it's like calling dibs, you've paid for the spot. And so when Lindsay saw the pink tickets, we were both kind of like, oh man, there's nobody here. There's literally one RV here, one trailer, but all the pink tickets are there. So Lindsay hopped out of the car. Yeah, so I hopped out of the car and looked at the tickets and sure enough, they were they were old tickets that they just left up. So thank goodness I, uh, we found a spot, um, pulled in, it's the perfect, it's like the perfect size site. It um, is beautiful it, here. Yeah, it's Ooh. so pretty. And we're right across the street from one of our favorite hikes ever in the U.S., and that is Corona Arch. We are happy to be here. We're happy that you're along with our wander. If you haven't already done so, like this video, subscribe to our channel, because we're going to bring you along to lots of beautiful places like this and have explorations like we're going to take you on while we're here in Moab. We're going to be here for three nights, so that gives us some time both to have some downtime, still decompressing from work, feels weird that we haven't had to put on our work clothes and go to work. Um, we got our time, we've got our, all of our time back. So there's a little decompression that's going on. We're going to get a little bit of work done for Call to Wander and uh, just relax and enjoy being here in this beautiful place. As the cold snow winter storm drifts north of us, we will have some colder temperatures but not crazy cold. Moab was awesome. It did exactly what we needed it to do, which was protect us from the cold and give us some cool stuff to get out and do. Oh yeah. And Moab in October is by far, I think our favorite time. Best time that we've been there. It served its purpose. We got out of the cold until this morning. We woke up and it was windy and it was cold, um, but we're on our way out of here. So yeah, that's uh, that was Moab. That was Moab, that was fun, good time. We got one more thing left to do in Utah. Going to a concert. What concert? Need to Breathe. Need to Breathe is our favorite band collectively. I have been listening to them for years. Lindsay had been listening to them for years. Kind of confirmation we were supposed to get married. Mm. Toward the end of, I wouldn't say one of our first dates, but in the toward the end of before we got married, uh, in our first year of dating, in our first year together, we saw them in a small town called Ocala, just south of Jacksonville, Florida. The last time we saw them was actually part of this big, massive journey of ours. 2018. 2018 and we were in South Carolina in Charleston. It was a homecoming show for them and that was really cool. That, that kind of wrapped up our first year on the road with the Need to Breathe 
concert. So we haven't seen him in years now. It's been five years. Yeah, wow. Four and a half, five, five years, years, over five years, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. It's been a long time and we are super excited, but we can't take you in there. So of course uh, we can't even play their music without getting dinged by YouTube. So what we're going to do is we're just going to cut this episode off mm -hmm. right here and we're gonna pick up with you on the backside of that concert. Yeah, Salt Lake City. Yep, we're gonna be in Salt in Salt Lake City. So we're gonna be just south of Salt Lake City. Last time we went through there, what happened? Our trip broke down. Yay, let's hope that that doesn't happen this time. I don't think that'll happen. Yep. If you wanna watch that video, you can go back and watch that video. We're linking to it. It was a crazy time in our life. So this time we're gonna be going right by where that happened, but maybe we'll drive out there just to see the place where things almost Maybe. Almost Maybe. came apart for us. But God was with us. This is a divine plan and divine journey for us. And so here we are on the road going from one place to the next. Next stop is Salt Lake. We'll see you on the flip side of that concert.